in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who by the passion of Christ your Son, our Lord, abolished the death inherited from ancient sin by every succeeding generation, grant that just as being conformed to him, we have borne by the law of nature the image of the man of earth, so by the sanctification of grace we may bear the image of the man of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The first reading is taken from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 52, verses 13 to chapter 53, verses 1 to 12. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 31. The response to the psalm is, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. The second reading is taken from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 4, verses 14 to 16, and chapter 5, verses 7 to 9. The gospel is taken from St. John, chapter 18, verses 1 to chapter 19, verses 1 to 42. I read from a portion of the gospel. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The chief priests of the Jews then said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing, they cast lots. So the soldiers did this. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, he said, to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A bowl full of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of the vinegar on hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is The Goodness of Good Friday, a tale of love. The Goodness of Good Friday, a tale of love. Dear good people of God, Today is Good Friday. Jesus Christ has died. Let us maintain some silence in prayer.
for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. loves me, I cannot say why. He loves you, you cannot say why. What an irony. Someone dies and we call the day good. What is good about death? What is good about an innocent man dying a death that is not his? What is good about murder, crucifixion, such a gruesome, shameful, and painful death? What can be good about people killing you, people for whom you did all the good you could? What can be good about your best friends betraying you, abandoning you, disowning you, and leaving you to die alone like a common thief? And we say today is Good Friday because Jesus has died. Yes, today is Good Friday. The day is good. And the goodness of Good Friday lies in the fact that we see the fullness of love. Love in its perfection and completeness. We see what love truly is. Love no be mop. It is not by word of mouth. Love is not only professed. Love is lived and shown. No love, in fact, no true love has anyone than to lay down his life for his friends. This is the goodness of Good Friday. That Jesus has shown us the depth of his love for us. That he died for us while we were sinners. It is difficult to die for a good man, but Jesus dies for us as sinful as we are. See how much he loves you. See how much he loves me. The goodness of Good Friday lies in the fact that by his death, we have been set free. His death became a blessing for us. The day is good. It is Good Friday because Jesus Christ has died. Not because he died, but because by that death we have been given life. Goodness has been brought out of evil. A blessing in disguise. It is Good Friday. The day is good because Jesus Christ has died for us. How can we therefore call the day we were saved and born a new bad. Some would have said, let us call this a bad Friday, but it cannot be called bad Friday. It is good Friday, because on this day, the death of Christ 
has brought us salvation. Love has been given to us. By his death on that cross, Jesus has shown the fullness of his love for us. If you doubted it, when you go to that cross, during the time of adoration, look at he who is nailed to it. It is the fullness and the depth of his love. Now the question is, see how much he has loved us. Do you accept that love? Good Friday is a tale of love. Love given. Love demonstrated. But now the question is, do you accept that love? How do we reciprocate that love that has been demonstrated on the cross? Love can be given, yet love can be rejected. We reject Jesus' love for us when we sin. Despite how much he has shown us that he loves us, when we sin, we nail him to the cross. When we sin, beloved, we continue to nail him to that cross. So we reject his love. We do not appreciate it. When we do not love our brothers and sisters as he has loved us, we reject his love. When we do not love our enemies, we reject his love. Because on that cross, Jesus loved all. Even those who persecuted and killed him, Father, forgive them. For they do not know what they are doing. He loved all, even his enemies. So when we fail to love our enemies, we reject that love. You tell Jesus he is stupid to have died on the cross for you. Dear God's good people, when you look at that cross during the adoration of the cross, see how much he loves you. See how much he has given his all without reserve, even his life for you. What more? would he have done? What more was there to show that he did not show it by his death? He died on the cross for you and for me. He gave his life and his all for all of us. What have we given him back in return? Dear God's good people, let us return love for love. Jesus has loved us. That is the goodness of Good Friday, a tale of love. He has shown us his all and his depth of love that he has for us. To show appreciation, let us return love for love. Let us accept this love that he has given us and love him in return. By keeping his commandments and loving our fellow brothers and sisters, even our enemies, just as he has loved us. It is Good Friday and that is the goodness of Good Friday. That Jesus has died for us and by his death, he has shown us love. He has won us salvation. Let us not return to sin. Let us not make ourselves captives anymore. For Christ Jesus has brought us freedom. Amen. God bless you.